Hi, this is Don Mock, and welcome to the blues from rock to jazz. You know, studying the 12-bar blues progression has proven to be a great way to learn about chord playing and improvising for all styles of music. So whether you're a rock player, a blues player, or a jazz player, I think you'll find the information on this video to be real useful. Now, we'll be going through the information very quickly here on the tape, but don't try to take it all in in one sitting. And you'll probably find it necessary to rewind the tape at time to learn the musical examples. So let's grab our guitars and tune up and get started. Well, before we get started, let's get tuned up. I'll give you some notes. You can tune your guitar to mine. There's a high E. And a B. Okay, the first thing we need to talk about here is the type of chords that make up our blues progressions. Uh, we're just going to deal with the major style blues today, uh, the kind of chords that are usually dominant sevens. Although the information we learn on this video uh, can be applied to a minor style blues, we're pretty much going to deal with just the dominant chords. In fact, the most common blues progressions, like the one you see there on the screen, is all dominant chords. You can see that there's three different chords, but they're all the same type of chord. And this becomes real important and becomes very easy for us because it's just a matter of moving the same voicing around the guitar. Now, as you can see, we have a 12 bar. This is a Chicago style traditional blues progression. And as we go on, we're gonna start inserting some fun chords into this progression to make it a little more involved. But this is our basic foundation of, of the progression. And uh, I'd like you to get used to the each bar number. In fact, bar one through four is all the one chord, C7. Then we go to our four chord, up to F7 and bar five and six. Bar six, back to the one chord, bar seven, and bar eight. Goes to the five chord in bar nine. Down to the four chord in bar 10. Back to the one chord in bar 11. That's this particular progression. They will vary as we get more involved. And there's lots of different variations of this kind of progression, too. Now, the first thing we want to talk about before we talk about all the fun soloing stuff is the chords. It's very important to become a good chord player as a guitarist. You know, your soloing will never be better than your chord vocabulary. So if you're thinking you can be a hot soloist and be a burner and not really pay much attention to your rhythm guitar playing and your chord playing, that's not really going to work because uh, your soloing is a direct reflection of your chord playing. So I really recommend that you get good at chords and you understand how chords work and how they're made up because that'll help with your soloing because you're, you'll think of chord shapes and you'll be able to see your scales and patterns and licks right around the chord shapes and it really can be helpful and simplify things. This progression is made up of all dominant style chords. There's three of them and Fingering-wise, they'd all be played the same, just, just like a slide rule, the way the guitar works. So let's uh, steal C7 out of our little progression here and just talk about it and its chords. Obviously, you should know some fingerings of just C7. Here's a, one of the most common. Get the camera in close. C7, probably one of the first ones I ever learned. You can see the chord there. This is still a good chord. Don't think that it's a, a baby chord or anything. That's a good voicing. Uh, this fingering right here, the bar version. Third on top. And coming up to here, this is a real common bar version. Although I play this a lot like this, only three notes. You know, you don't have to play six notes to be to make good chords on the guitar. Some of the best chords on the instrument may only need two, three, four notes in them. Three. Okay, now we have a list here of the different types of C dominant chords. Now when I say types of dominant chords, C's dominant chords, these chords all fit into a family. 
fact, for me, playing, improvising over any one of these chords, I'm going to play the same stuff. Whether you, as the rhythm guitar player, keyboard player, plays C7, C9, C11, C13, those are all in the same harmonic family. They all do the same thing. They're not going to affect my melody or my scales if you decide to play an 11th chord instead of a 9th chord. So get used to the idea that they're all in the same style of family. And now these are all static chords. It means that they're the type of dominant chords that you'd use in a, in a static one chord vamp. Now as we get into more chord changes, the dominant chord has another name and those would be called uh, functioning dominant chords. That's where you might see a list like this except it'll be dominant seven, flat nine, sharp nine, all those real ugly looking chords. But for right now, let's talk about the static type. And these are more common in, in blues and in fusion music and pop music. All these chords, like I said before, have the same musical function. Just the different notes by adding the 11th on or the 13th. Just colorize the chord a little differently, give it a different personality, but it doesn't change its musical function. And you as a chord player can always choose to play any one of these at any time. It's just a, a style choice. Now, in a, in a heavy metal tune, you may not like the sound of a 13th chord. It might sound too jazz-oriented. But in a jazz progression, you might want to do more than a, just a C7 chord. That's up to you. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the actual chord voicings. We did uh, some C7s. Let's learn a few C9 chords. This, this is the, the pretty common garden variety C9 that we all learn. That's a good voicing. Here's another voicing of C9 up here. Seventh fret. That would be the root. You could play it with the root. Uh, here's another kind of nice C9 like this. A little stretcher, but boy, that sounds good. I'm not playing the top string yet. And if I do want to play the top string, I could add it up here. This is a nice chord. See, I think of these as pretty much the same chord, just two different positions of it. Either this note on the bottom or the top. All right. How about some eleventh chord sounds? There are lots of these on the guitar. I'll give you a few, but you know, on your own, you should find some good voicings of 11th chords because they're more in the fusion style blues and a lot of pop music nowadays. The 11th chord has become the chord. This is one of the common 11th chords right there. You could add an extra note there, like that one. And if I'm going pretty quick, you can always rewind the tape back and check the little fingerings out. Uh, this could be considered an 11th chord. Well, again, an invisible root. The root could be right there. This is uh, more like a B flat over C chord, but this is, could be uh, it's an eleventh sounding chord. It has the, the tendency to sound like an eleventh chord, and you could play it as an eleventh chord. Just a bar. That's all it takes. One finger. What a great sound. Uh, Thirteenth voicings. Let's go through a few of those real quick. Uh, this is probably the, the common one. This is C13. Another possibility of that would be up here on the eighth fret. You can see all the fingers. Some people play it like this. I use my thumb just so I have some extra fingers to do little fun things with. But you can certainly do it like that. You could add the top note if you wanted to. Here's a good uh, uh, stretched version of the same, another thir C13. It's like that ninth we just learned, except it's got the top note, which happens to be the 13th. One more voicing for good measure down here. Here's another C13. It's actually similar to this one in sound. It's got the seventh in the bottom, the third, and the not, then the uh, 13th right there. The last voicings, let's go through real quick our the hip ones, the uh, slash chords. This is a B flat over C. It's still a dominant chord. That's a good voicing of that. This is another voicing like that. It's a B flat triad, so anywhere you play a, a triad with the, with the C in it would work. I suppose you could do this. Or even this chord. I showed you that as an 11th chord, but Truthfully, it's more would be correctly called a B flat over C. But you'll find that the B flat over C chords sound like 11th chords, and they, they're pretty much interchangeable at any time. Okay, let me show you a quick little 
thing here that you can do with dominant chords that I think is really great. Uh, we'll call it a chord scale. We're going to play a scale with a chord underneath each one of these notes. Now, this is a C dominant scale. It could also be called F major, starting on C. We'll get to that later when we talk about improvising. But that's the right scale for a C7 chord. And we're going to put a, uh, a type of C7 underneath each one of these scale notes. Um, I'll just go through it and check it out. C7 with a root on top right here. Uh, this is kind of a C11 we learned that a minute ago. It's got the ninth on top of a second. Here's our stock C7 with a third on top. Here's uh, our B flat over C with a fourth on top. Now here's our C9 with a fifth on top. Here's our C13 with the sixth on top, the thirteenth on top. And here's a, 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 we'll call a C11. You might know it as G minor seven, like this, but in this usage, we'll call it C11, and it gives us our B flat, or seventh on top. And then we'll use this chord, our C9, with the root on top. Did you hear the scale? And you can just practice this, just like a scale, until you get the technique of it. Octave higher. Now this is great for comping. You can instead of pounding away on just one chord, you can at, at your discretion play my little melodies. Okay, in this section we're going to talk about soloing over the dominant seven chord now that we've learned the chords. And we're still just using the dominant seventh chord taken out of the blues progression. And it's now a static chord, like a lot of pop tunes and fusion tunes. And when we put it back in the blues progression, we'll be able to apply a lot of the same things to it. But we're just going to take a C7 chord, and we're going to just uh, make a list of all the different scales and some arpeggio ideas. So I'm going to move through this pretty quickly, and you can rewind the tape and watch each part if you need to. You might get a piece of paper out and write down the names of these, because we're going to cook right through the, the list. Our chord is C7. The, the starting point is to understand the key center, or the, the scale, the seven note, or major type scale that works against this chord. And C7 is not in the key of C major. It's actually the five chord in the key of F. So the true scale for that is an F major scale. So we can play an F major scale starting on F. Or we can play an F major scale starting on C. It's the same notes, it's the key center, we're just starting on C this time instead of F. Now coming back to our C7 chord, the key center once again is F, and uh, so that's really the, the best true scale. Now it's not real funky sounding, we're going to talk about some blue scales and pentatonics will work for that, but you'll be surprised how much music is hiding within that, that F scale. Now let me give you another name. Those of you that are into modes, that could also be called a C mixolydian mode. Now, how about some pentatonic scales that can be played against our C7 chord? When we get into blues, that's going to be real important. There are at least three pentatonics that work well over C7. I'll go through them real quickly here. First one is C major pentatonic. The notes in that, just in case you're not sure what that is, C, D, E, G, and A. It's a C major scale or a C mixolydian scale with a couple notes left out. There's no seventh. There's no fourth. And that's called a major pentatonic. There's a little. Another one that'll work on a C7 chord is an F pentatonic scale. Now some of you might know, if I play this particular finger, you might think of it as a, as a, like a D minor. I'm up here on the, the tenth fret. It's a coincidence that D minor pentatonic is the same as F major pentatonic. They're the same scale. It's two different names for the same thing. I would prefer that you just call it F major pentatonic. Now this next fingering is a B flat pentatonic, starting on C. This 
is a good fingering because it's right there with the chord. C7. This would actually be the root of the B flat pentatonic. Now, all three of these pentatonic scales so far are all in the key of F. Uh, there's no new notes. If we added up all 15 notes, which we'd actually end up with only seven because we'd have a lot of duplicates, they're just the notes of the key of F. So remember that every key center has three major pentatonics in it. What is the three pe major pentatonics for the key of C? Well, it'd be C major, F major, and G major. What about the key of E flat? Well, it'd be one, four, five, the E flat, A flat, and B flat major pentatonics. This is real handy when you play in other types of chords. For example, if we have A minor seven. Once you decide what key A minor is in, I'll say it's in the key of G right now, I could play all three of the pentatonics of the key of G. That'd be G, C, and D. Now back to our C7, there is another pentatonic that we can play, and that's to get the blues sound. And this becomes real important when we start talking, when we get back into our blues progression here. Uh, we could call it a, a C blues pentatonic scale, or we could just call it an E flat major pentatonic. Whichever the case, it's the same way. And this is what starts to give us our blue notes, our minor third that gets played against a major third that's in the chord. And that's where the, the actual blues sound begins. The wrong against right. That's the real common pentatonic. So now we have four. We have C, we have F, we have G, and then we have E flat. And that's the blues sound. Now if you're a rock player or a blues player and you know a lot of licks or ideas out of the pentatonic scale, now you can play them in all three or four locations that we've discussed here. And now, if your one lick now has four different locations that can be played in, it's great. It gives your idea four different personalities. Now, to, to uh, demonstrate this, let me show you a little lick in uh, a pentatonic scale, and then we'll demonstrate it against all four of the usages. We'll use it in C pentatonic right now. So this is a C pentatonic lick, and it goes like this. Just a little sequence. Let me go through it slow again. Okay, I'm just going to play a little bit over a C7 vamp now using our four pentatonic scales and our little lick. And I'm going to play the lick not only in C, where we learned it, but also in F, B flat, and the E flat pentatonic. And listen to how one line can sound totally different when placed in different places against the chord. So check this out. <laughs> Now this is the C pentatonic, real major sound. Here's the B flat pentatonic. And how about the, the F pentatonic? Finally, the E flat, the blues pentatonic. And here's our little melody, first in C. B flat. Now up in F. Flat. Now the E flat really took on that blues sound. I'll do it again. The arpeggio playing is a is a big subject in itself, and I'm not going to go way in depth to it, but I do want to give you the, the, the strongest arpeggios to use over a static style dominant seven chord. 
And arpeggios, of course, are the notes of a chord, just played one note at a time. Now, this is a C7 arpeggio. We're going to learn about five or six other ones, but instead of learning com complicated sounding arpeggios to get all these different sounds for C7, we're just going to learn basic arpeggios just borrowed from other keys. For example, we're going to play a G minor 7 arpeggio against our C7 chord. That's one fingering. Here the camera can zoom up here close to check that out. If you play me a C7 chord, you can hear it work against the chord. Another one would be a B-flat major 7 arpeggio against our C7. Play me a C7 chord, okay? That's a B-flat major 7. That sounds really good against C7. That gives us kind of a C9 sound. Uh, Another one might be uh, E minor 7 flat 5. Arpeggio. That's actually a diatonic chord, E minor 7 flat 5. It looks a lot like that ninth chord we learned. And that's true. It, just, it has two names. It could be a C9 or an E minor 7 flat 5. The arpeggio. Great arpeggio for that. Now check this out. This is kind of a coincidence. And an easy way to remember these four diatonic seventh chord arpeggios for C7. We have one, an arpeggio built off of each, each uh, tone of the C7 chord. What I mean is, we'll come in close here, C7, we got an arpeggio off the root C. Now we, have, we go to the third, which is E. We're going to play that E minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio there. the fifth, which is G right here. Now we play our G minor seven. Okay. We go to the seventh, which is B flat, and we play that major seven. So you got these four arpeggios built off of each note of the C7. Easy way to remember. That sound, it's, those are all combinations of these arpeggios. Improvising doesn't mean you just you play a bunch of scales and then play an arpeggio out of the blue from top to bottom. That's not really what good arpeggio playing is. Using arpeggios is you may only play two or three notes of one, two or three notes of another. Okay, now let's uh, let's hear some of these in context. There's a little vamp there, C7. Seven arpeggio. A little, few little stylistic things in there. There's that G minor. And the E minor seven flat five. And uh, what's the other one? B flat major seven. Okay. I like that one fingering. You play this shape in three different places. You can figure that out. Now let me just play and use these arpeggios combined with some scale things. And this is how they can get used. Listen for them. Here's C7. I used it to help set up a little idea. Check this out. C7, E minor 7 flat 5, G minor 7, B flat major 7. Right there, B C seven, B flat major seven. So you can 
can see it's a constant little game. A little game you play with your listener to create these different little sounds. What's wild is we haven't left the key center of C yet. You know, if you figured it out, all those arpeggios, all the notes of those arpeggios are in the key of C mixolydian or F major. A lot of sound hiding out there in the major harmony. Now, when we start getting back into our blues progression here, we're going to start mixing these sounds with, with the blues scale. Now, I did that a little bit in that, in that demonstration. I played some pentatonic ideas. Mixed up with some arpeggio. And that's where the styles become real different. Uh, a real blues guitar player may play less arpeggios and play more pen pentatonic -y, blues lick ideas. And the more the jazz-oriented players might tend to play more arpeggio and scale ideas. And that's all what we're talking about here, the variation. Now, two more quick arpeggios that we can play over C7 are the simple arpeggios. The more difficult to play, but they sound simple. Major arpeggios. One, three, five, one, three, five. Has a C major arpeggio. Some of you sweet pickers might be able to sweep it. Pretty much alter alternate picking all the notes in this arpeggio. So the two arpeggios are, it's the same one, it's just two locations of it. A C major arpeggio and a B flat major arpeggio. The neat thing to keep track of, these are a whole step apart, C major and B flat major. Remember that because that's going to come in handy if you can play these same two relationships over uh, some other chords. So a B flat and a C. And for now, they work great on C7. One other quick one I'll throw at you just for fun here is a D. Just move up a whole step, play a D major arpeggio. Now we start to open the realm of some more modern sounds, but I wanted to throw that at you anyway, because it's such a simple arp, and it sounds so good over C7 to play the D. So triadic improvising is no big deal. It's just the use of, of these types of little arpeggios like that. Uh, three notes of one, a few scale ideas, maybe a lick, three notes of another, two of one. That's kind of how that works. Okay, now let's apply some of these soloing ideas to, uh, honest to goodness, blues progression. Now, what you're looking at is a B-flat traditional blues progression. This is kind of like a tune that I learned a long time ago, one of my favorite blues guitar players, Mike Bloomfield, a little tune that he sang on an album called Mary Ann. Got this little line like that. And it goes through these chord progressions, goes to the four chord, five, and so forth. Now, what we want to do is try to apply some of these soloing ideas to each of these chords. Now, here's the, how this works. Uh, traditional blues guitar players often will play the same material, soloing material, no matter what chord is going on. Now, this can be fine for some players. Some of the more melodic players can, can pull this off. But uh, there's other players that, that play just the same licks and things over no matter what chord it is, and it can get kind of boring because you can't tell what chord they're on. They don't I, I define the chord changes. If you took away the rhythm guitar, took away the bass player, you really wouldn't know what chord they're on. And personally, I like to hear guitar players that, that sound a little more intelligent, that I can tell which chord they're on. That doesn't mean you have to play a bunch of scales and arpeggios for each individual chord, but you hint at certain notes or sounds of each chord to capture the sound. Now, uh, the common scale here for a B-flat blues in traditional sense would be the, the pentatonic, the, the C-sharp pentatonic in this case, or the B-flat blues scale. Now let me just play a little bit, and I'll do my, my Mike Bloomfield imitation for you, and I play real stock, straight blues. And pretty much it'll all be the same kinds of lines uh, over each of the chords. And it might sound okay, we'll see. line on the next chord, even though it now changes to E-flat.
that's kind of the, 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 the way I first learned to play blues guitar. And I played in that style, and it was, it was great. Uh, but I ne didn't necessarily address each chord. And that's kind of the next step, if you want to sound a little more intelligent and want to head towards jazz playing, is we, we want to now play over each individual chord. This is a fine progression for that. So if we look at each chord individually and key center wise, the first chord being B flat, we're going to play our Mixolydian scale for that, E flat major, could also be called. Those same arpeggios, those same pentatonics. But what happens now when this thing changes to the four chord, the whole thing has to change. All new scales, now it goes to E flat seven. So what key is that in? Well, it's the five chord in the key of A flat major, so you're going to play an A flat major scale. And you'll play the same relationship arpeggios and triads and so forth for that. When it goes to the five chord, F7, same thing. We're now in the key of, of B flat major, and you're going to play the B flat scale against that. So let me play through a little bit now with the band, and, uh, and I'll go more for each of the chord sounds. Now, you'll notice a little bit difference in sound, and I'll play more scale line ideas. In this section, we're going to learn the eight-note dominant scale. This is a great scale to get more of a jazz or bebop sound. And the reason that it has that sound is because of the extra note added to a major scale, the minor seventh. Or we're adding a major seventh to a dominant seventh scale. Look at it whichever way you'd like. This first fingering you can see there on the screen is shows those four half steps in a row. This is a C eight note dominant scale, C, B, B flat. Here's another fingering of the same scale, more around the chord. One thing about this scale, it has a tendency to sound more dominant when played downhill. And it's because that, that seventh, the major seventh, even though it's a wrong note to have on a dominant chord, it serves as kind of a springboard to make the dominant seventh note sound more dominant. Hear it? That's what gives it its, its kind of beboppy sound. Listen to these kinds of ideas, these lines like this. You might have heard of these sounds for like Charlie Parker or something. That thing was pretty much all some arpeggio ideas, but primarily out of that scale. Check that out. Let's learn a uh, lick or a melody out of this scale. This is kind of a bebop sounding line for a C7 chord using the eight note dominant scale. It goes like this. Sounds a little 
copy. Let me do it again. Now let's go through real slow so we can kind of analyze what's going on. Primarily, it is the eight note dominant, but it does have a few little art moves in it, arpeggio moves. Here we go. Here's the first part of it. Next part, now we go up a long arpeggio, B flat major 7 arpeggio by the way. Now we're to the next section, a little arpeggio again, that's like a D minor shape actually. I move down to here now, the 8th uh, fret. Right down the scale now. Here's a little D minor shape. Back down the scale. Okay, let's apply the eight note dominant scale and maybe some other things that we've talked about earlier to a, uh, a fusion style blues progression. This progression, as you can see, looks an awful lot like a a typical traditional blues with the exception that it goes to the C7 chord later in the progression. And all the chords are pretty much 11th style chords or G over A type. It goes up to the four chord, goes back to the one, five chord, four chord. Actually, you could call this the flat three chord. Reminiscent of a tune called Follow Your Heart by John McLaughlin. That's a fusion style blues tune. So let's just play here with the band and uh, demonstrate some of those ideas. Here we go. Okay, we're back to the progressions here, and uh, as you can see, we have, which looks familiar, this is our first progression that we did earlier, except now it's down in the key of G. Now it's a G blues, and it's written exactly the same way. It's got the three dominant chords. Now we're going to just take this basic progression and start plugging in some extra chords to it and talk about soloing to that. And it's going to evolve from being a traditional blues progression into more of a jazz progression. And as progression gets more involved, so does your soloing. Soloing would have to. Let's look at the next progression. Now here, there's a new chord plugged in, actually a couple chords plugged in. Uh, we've got what we call a quick change. It goes to the four chord in bar two. This is kind of a pretty traditional way to go on blues too. You'll see both a quick change and a not so quick change. There's the quick change. The only difference is this C7 in bar two. Uh, everything's the same until we get down to bar 11. And this has got 
the beginnings of a turnaround. It goes from the one chord, four, to one, to five. Soloing wise, you could pretty much play the same way you would over the first progression, except uh, when it does go to that quick change in bar two, you do need to change your scales there because you don't want to be playing the major third of the G chord. And when it goes to that four chord, to be playing that note, you know, it doesn't work too good together. Now this progression is pretty much the uh, agreed upon jazz, standard jazz five chord progression. I call it a, a five chord progression because there's five different chords in it. Unlike our first progression, it had three different chords in it. This has the additional six chord and the additional two chord. If you got together with some jazz guys and just said, hey, let's play a blues in G, this is pretty much the progression that everybody would assume that each other's gonna play. This is kind of the standard progression. There is another chord that can be plugged in and a diminished seventh chord, bar six. So how we have this sound. Okay, the secondary dominant sixth chord in a blues. In our G blues, that'd be E7. This chord requires a little different treatment than the other dominant chords of the blues. It's because it's uh, heading towards an A minor chord, and it actually is a real dominant, functioning dominant five chord. So let me give you a few chord voicings and scale ideas to play over that chord. Uh, first rule is that you shouldn't play the same kinds of chords that you'd play uh, on a regular dominant chord in the other parts of a blues. Uh, you might find that you might not like the sound of, of E9 or E13 or even E11. Those notes, those added notes, those extensions actually leave the key that the chord's trying to be in. So I suggest that you stay away from those voicings and play things like E7 or E7 with a flat nine or E7 with a raised ninth. It's called altered chords. E7, even with a raised fifth on top here, or the flatted fifth, flatted ninth. Those are, those are nice sounds when you go into that chord. You have to do a little experimenting, but I think you'll agree with me. And scale-wise on this chord, same thing applies. I don't think that the A major scale or E mixolydian scale is the right scale for that. It doesn't, it seems to sound a little odd. You can try it. If you think it sounds okay, go ahead. I would prefer uh, A harmonic minor scale instead of A major scale for this. We're playing an A harmonic minor scale. We're superimposing it against the E7. We're not playing an A harmonic minor against A minor. And this is what gives it a nice altered sound. In fact, it kind of mirror images the sound of these chords, these altered chords. That's A harmonic minor. It sounds like that chord, huh? You need to, at first, you'll learn the scale patterns. And if you know those, your next step is then to learn some melodies from the scale. Another scale that works for this chord is the F melodic minor scale. Now, if you've learned your melodic minor scale patterns, we think up one half step from the root of the chord we're on, E7, go up that half step and play F melodic minor. Again, this gives us some real nice extensions and alterations for the E7 chord. Now you should analyze these two scales against the chord to uh, understand why they work. Okay, two other quick ideas for our E7 secondary dominant chord is a, a diminished arpeggio. We can start up a half step above the E7 and play that arpeggio. Gives us a nice altered sound. And the diminished scale. It's also an F diminished scale, a half step above the E7. I start on here on, my, on a B flat. I remember the relationship by this E7 to this root B flat. Now in the last two bars of a jazz blues, 
we have the turnaround. And it can be the most awkward thing to play over, especially at faster tempos. Now, I have a little idea here for you. It's almost, you could call a scale. It's a little melody that descends down the guitar that, at this point, is just eighth notes. And uh, it can be, there's some things you can do with it after you learn it. So let's just learn the little scale pattern first. As you can see it on the screen, it sounds like this. Hear the chords in there. That's the G chord. Here's the E7, the flat nine. Here's the A minor. Going to the D7, flat nine, resolving it back to the G. Now the first thing we can do is we can invert the different sections into different octaves. So by knowing this one little scale idea, we can play it a bunch of different ways. Let me give you a couple options. Check this out. Here's the first part, as you can see in the original octave. But now it goes up an octave. In the second half. So now it's not so much a scale going down, it sounds more melodic. Okay, another uh, way to do it would be this next one. Now we start actually an octave lower. Okay, now we have a few jazz style solos for our 12 bar blues in G for our five chord progression. Now these are solid eighth note solos. Now this, this doesn't mean that I want you to play solid eighth note solos for the rest of your life, but it's a good place, way to learn ideas for these progressions. And I wanted you to see the makeup of a, of a real common jazz style blues solo. So let's look at our first solo. In fact, let me just play it for you. In fact, I'd like you to play the chords because I don't have a band right now. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Let me go through it kind of slow now for you. Bar to time. Here's the first opening kind of bebop line for the first bar. Okay. Two, because it changed to that C7 chord. Bar three. Here's a little arpeggio. It's actually an F major seven arpeggio. And as this chord gets ready to go to C7, I've stuck in here a little altered idea, a little uh, augmented sound for the G7. five. Here's just a little sequence. Now it changes back to the G chord. The sequence continues. Here's our harmonic minor scale, A harmonic for our E7. Here's a C major 7 arpeggio for the A minor. And then on our D7 chord, diminished scale. Little turnaround idea. Saves us back to the top again. Okay, this next solo kind of demonstrates more of a, some chromatic ideas. 
three, four. Go through it bar at a time. You know, this first bar is kind of a lot of chromaticism in it, and it kind of outlines this D minor seven chord right here. So I kind of think of it as a as a substitute for the G seven. Little altered idea here, going into the C seven. Then the C seven bar. Bar five. These are some of our arpeggio ideas we talked about earlier. Now here's back to the G7. And our harmonic minor for that E7 book chord. Lands on that uh, C note, which is part of the A minor chord. got one more solo here. This is more of a modern solo for our 12-bar blues in G. Uh, it's not that it's it's outside the key center or anything, it's just that it's more inner valley, lots of skips around. And you know, you can learn these solos and then borrow some of the little ideas and then use them in your everyday playing. That's kind of the reason that I gave you these. Three, four. <laughs> Let's go through this solo slowly, bar at a time, and talk about each of the little licks. Uh, this one starts with all fifths, except for the first is a minor sixth, but up to that F, then an F triad. Great little line for D minor seven or G seven. Uh, take a look at my right hand here. I'm starting with an upstroke. Downstroke on the on the E. It seems a little awkward, but I suppose you could sweep that down if you're into that. And I'm an alternate picker, so I'm picking each note individually. Next bar, it does the same kind of idea, but uh, modified to fit the C7, the four chord. Little G minor triad there. And then here's one of my favorite little ideas: all fifth. Starting on G, this is kind of a G7 arpeggio, actually. Into bar five. And a diminished scale. To bar seven, which is a G chord. We do a little G major seven move there, even though the chord's supposed to be G dominant. This is okay. Into bar eight. Here's another A harmonic minor. Now we have another little interval idea. It's almost just like the one we did in uh, bar three, but now it's for the A minor chord. The only modification is to flatten the third here instead of. Then here's a little uh, another fifth idea. This is built off of the flat five substitute chord. And those of you that know what that means knows that the flat five substitute for D7 is A flat seven. And to me, this is an A flat seven idea in fifths. You can hear how well that works on the A flat seven. Another lick that can be borrowed out of the solo. 
then we have back to our G chord, our little turnaround. This is all sixth intervals. You can hear the G chord. Now the E7 chord. Now diminish scale for the D7 chord all the way down to the finish. Okay, let's uh, hear some of those solos in context. I got a little blues tune here that uh, my good friend Robin Ford taught me, and it's a, it's a little faster tempo, so you can hear some of these solos up at breakneck speed. Uh, it's in B flat, so we're gonna have to shift everything up a minor third. That's about all the time we have, and I just want to thank you for joining me, and I hope you found some things on the tape that you can use in your own playing. So good luck, practice hard, and see you later. <laughs>